me, hunting is about the pursuit. It's about seeing things that most people will never see. It's about determination. It's about pushing yourself to new limits. Most of all, it's about the journey. Hi, I'm Dan Allred. Come join me on my 2012 Idaho public land archery hunt. I've got about a two hour hike. I'm going to bivy hunt in just for a night. Um, see if there's anything in there worth chasing. Um, getting a little late start. It's about seven o'clock. Got enough stuff for a couple nights worth of food just in case I had to stay. Um, or wanted to stay, I should say. Okay, so I just spooked a cow out, or an elk, it probably was a bull actually, because I thought I could hear his horns hitting some limbs, made a lot of noise, so I know I'm close. Get, got a fresh rub here, um, and there's another one I can see, right on another tree over there too, but it's a good sign, looks like he nicked it up here, so. Looks like the wolves like this spot too. Gonna go to bed now. I'm tired. There's Betty by. The next morning now, and I'm tracking, trying to track this bull. right here and we circled that tree a million times. dead porcupine. Something ate on it too. I don't know what can kill a porcupine or wants to. Interesting. The following weekend I brought my buddy Carl with me. Now Carl was new to Idaho, recently had moved there from the state of Florida. So this country was pretty unfamiliar to him. But as you can tell by the smiles on his face, Carl was sure having a good time. Now Carl and I had spotted some mountain goats near this lake and while Carl was taking a nap took that opportunity to see how close I could get. I just hiked up there and took a look at those goats. Wanted to get closer to see how close I could get. The wind was really, really crappy right now. It's swirling really bad. So I got probably within 150 yards of them and took a little video of them and as they were going over. But I knew when that wind was blowing straight from me to them that it was probably not going to work out. <laughs> but that was cool. Carl and I were able to find this nice buck. Just after we saw that buck, we saw a nice little raghorn bull. I'm running out. A little while later, we saw this big bull. He was standing between two trees at about 11,000 feet, right up with the mountain goats. He came walking down the hill about 20 minutes later. Boy, what a sight he was. <laughs> Pretty cold, huh? Just 37. That's all. <laughs> this is our lovely little camp in the Idaho backcountry. 
outside of a nice little meadow right here. The following weekend, I went back in solo. I brought about seven days worth of food and a chair so that I could sit by this wallow that Carl and I had found. Uh, the wallow was getting hit pretty hard, so I was pretty excited. Some more mountain goats. Planning on hiking way up in, but unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> what am I saying? There was a big bull only a couple hundred yards away from the trailhead from where it started, from where I parked the car. Well, he was probably a quarter mile away, but I saw him up on the hillside just a couple hundred, three hundred yards away and had to shed my pack and go out after him. I almost shot him. I almost got that big boy. He was probably about a 320 class bull. But here's my camp. Tonight I just threw the rain fly from the tent over my sleeping bag. Got to put out the rest of my camp. I'm gonna get a little lunch, and then I'm gonna go make the make a blind. Rocket. I've got I think four or five of these. Don't know how long I'll be staying up here. Hopefully, I'll get something down pretty soon. But okay, you're not gonna believe this, and I barely believe it. Um, I just shot a bull. Actually, I was getting water. I heard a noise and uh, I, I thought for sure it was a jet flying over back to, to the tent here and sure enough I heard a bugle rip off and it's close and I know where it's coming from. I'm about 200 yards um, below the that wallow. You know, grabbing my binoculars bow my and my calls and I went up there and a bunch of cows feeding and I had multiple shots at cows but I held about 40 yards. Um, and hit him. All the cows kept feeding after I shot and um, you know eventually and I don't think it was my wind it could have been my wind but I don't think so I think that they just found that something was odd with the bull because I couldn't keep my eyes on both streams of elk going up both ways and there's a lot of a lot of downfall a lot of trees but for what I could see that bull wasn't following those cows. Is, I'm gonna take a couple pictures of these wallows so that you can see see what they, these bulls were so interested in. These are, this whole area is filled with seeps. Here's the other wallow right here. This is the other wallow. If you can see, you can see his impression right there where he was laying. But I looked over like this, started looking around, and look at that. Not seen this bull, I promise you. I have not walked over to it. I went over and grabbed the backpack and the camera and my bow. But he looks deader than a doornail. Oh my gosh. Look at that bull. Over the counter public land bull. Backcountry Idaho. I've been bivouacking. This is my, oh, I don't know, third or fourth. This is my third or fourth trip back in here. Yeah. Look at that bull. Wow, he doesn't have a sixth point on one side. He's a five by six. Strap on a backpack. I had way more than I normally do. I probably, that backpack's probably 60, 65 pounds right now with chairs and all this other stuff that I was going to use to build a blind here, which I didn't need because I came up here and shot, shot a bull before I even, before I even walked up to try to build a blind. He's, Elk were on here when I was setting up camp and getting some water and stuff, so. But I'm gonna go ahead and start working on him. Yeah.